But coming back to the West's prophecies for Russia, all the predictions about isolation and economic gloom and doom, see how they're playing out. Russia is predicted to have a very sharp recession in 2022. Now it's, we are predicting negative 6% for 2022. Before we were predicting negative 8.5. So that's the upward revision. But it's still fairly sizable uh, recession in Russia in uh, 2022. The European economy, we're reducing down the uh, growth levels to uh, about 2.6%, but it's still positive. You just heard the IMF's chief economist. He says the Russian economy is doing better than expected. What was expected? A collapse of the Russian system. At least that's what the West had expected. Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine, the West has been slapping sanctions. This week, for example, began with the headline, Britain targets Russian officials in new wave of sanctions. Russia's officials have been targeted. Banks have been targeted. Brands have been targeted. Financial institutions have been targeted. Trade has been targeted. Basically, everything Russian has been sanctioned by the West. And what's the end result? Here's what else the IMF chief economist said, and I'm quoting. The Russian central bank and the Russian policymakers have been able to stave off a banking panic or financial meltdown when the sanctions were first imposed. He also said that the rising energy prices are, quote unquote, providing an enormous amount of revenues to the Russian economy. What about the West? The countries that slapped sanctions on Russia, how are they faring? Europe is bearing the brunt of the energy war. Look at Germany. On the 22nd of February this year, Germany suspended the certification of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. This move was supposed to hurt Russia. Today is the 27th of July 2022 and Germany is in the middle of an energy crisis. By the end of this week, their energy supply will drop to 20%. Moscow says it's all because of technical reasons. But the world knows that Putin is pulling the strings. He is punishing the EU's biggest economy. European sanctions are basically boomeranged. The 27 EU states are scrambling to fill their gas storage. Case study number two, the United Kingdom. On the 22nd of February, the UK froze assets of five Russian banks. Again, it is the 27th of July today. The IMF is upgrading Russia's GDP estimate by two and a half percentage points. What about the UK? Its inflation has hit a 40-year high and it faces a 50-50 chance of recession. And I'm not saying that the Russian economy has not been affected at all. Russia has taken a hit, no two ways about it. Its economy is going to contract by at least 6%. But for the West, it will be a Pyrrhic victory, if you can call it a victory at all. The UK, for example, is expected to grow by 0.5% in 2023. This too is from the IMF forecast. Moral of the story, sanctions don't work. And we told you this a long time ago. What's the point of these sanctions or of forcing a country to default on its debt when creditors know very well that the default is artificially orchestrated? Today, energy prices are shooting through the roof thanks to the Western sanctions. As for Russia, it is neither badly affected nor isolated. You heard what the IMF had to say. Now look at where Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has been jet-setting. He is on a tour of Africa. So far, he has visited Egypt, Congo and Uganda. Next stop, Ethiopia. In Congo, Lavrov defended the war. He blamed the West for the rising prices and said there are no barriers to Ukraine's grain exports. Unbiased experts also confirmed what we have said since the very beginning. The grain terminal of Odessa port is located at a considerable distance from the military part. There are no obstacles to starting deliveries of grain to customers in line with the deal signed, and we have not created any obstacles. In Uganda, President Yoweri Musevenu told Lavrov that he saw no reason to criticize the Russian war. Do you see what they're trying to do here? This tour of Africa is Russia's way of diversifying its diplomacy, of looking away from the West. It is geostrategic posturing. Russia accounts for less than 1% of foreign direct investment in Africa. This continent has by and large been a battlefield between the West and Asia and China, in fact. Africa has also refused to be party to Western sanctions, much like Asia. African countries have not joined the West in slamming Russia. Remember, 17 African nations abstained on a UN resolution against Russia's war. 
they see the futility of sanctions and Russia sees another opportunity to counter the West. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.